When does each new human life begin? Is this purely a subjective matter, or can we find an objective answer? Let's look at just facts. The U.S. Supreme Court has issued a ruling in Dobbs v. Jackson. This case involves a Mississippi law that limits abortion to 15 weeks gestation, except in medical emergency and in cases of severe fetal abnormality. During the hearing, Mississippi Solicitor General Scott G. Stewart defended the law by asserting that the state has an interest in preventing the purposeful termination of a human life. But Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor challenged him and declared, how is your interest anything but a religious view? The issue of when life begins has been hotly debated by philosophers since the beginning of time. It's still debated in religions. So when you say this is the only right that takes away from the state the ability to protect a life, that's a religious view. Contrary to Sotomayor and regardless of what any philosopher or religious leader may think, the facts of science are clear that each human life begins at fertilization. The facts which we will now review are from credible science publications that don't argue for or against abortion. In other words, they are not polemics from people with science degrees, but facts from neutral scientific authorities. The American Heritage Dictionary of Science, which was written by nine highly credentialed scientists under a precise editorial review to maintain a standard of excellence, states, The form of existence that organisms like animals and plants have, and that inorganic objects or organic dead bodies lack, animate existence characterized by growth, reproduction, metabolism, and response to stimuli. Those four defining characteristics of life are all present during or soon after fertilization, which occurs when a sperm and egg unite to form a zygote, or the earliest stage of a human embryo. Let's start with growth. Per the textbook Essentials of Human Development, a Lifespan View, fertilization begins the period of the zygote, and the zygote grows rapidly through cell division. Now let's look at reproduction. Per a paper in the biochemical journal, sexual reproduction in mammals results in the formation of a zygote, a single cell which contains all the necessary information to produce an entire organism comprised of billions of cells grouped into multitudinous cell types. How about metabolism? Per the medical text, Human Gametes and Preimplantation Embryos, Assessment and Diagnosis, at the zygote stage, the human embryo metabolizes carboxylic acids, pyruvate, and lactate as its preferred energy substrates. And finally, response to stimuli. The Oxford Dictionary of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology defines a stimulus as any event or phenomenon such as radiation, electrical potential, or addition of molecules that leads to excitation of a tissue or cell. Experiments have found that human zygotes respond to such stimulants. For example, a paper in the journal Human Reproduction Update documents that a compound called platelet activating factor acts upon the zygote by stimulating metabolism, cell cycle progression, and viability. Nor is a zygote just a form of human life like a skin cell. It's an actual human life. As explained in Van Nostrand's Scientific Encyclopedia, at the moment, the sperm cell of the human male meets the ovum of the female and the union results in a fertilized ovum, zygote, a new life has begun. In keeping with these facts, clinical literature is explicit that each new human life begins at fertilization. The Encyclopedia and Dictionary of Medicine, Nursing, and Allied Health states that human reproduction is the process by which the male sperm unites with the female's oocyte, creating a new life. The embryology textbook Before We Are Born, Essentials of Embryology and Birth Defects, states that the zygote and early embryo are living human organisms. 
the medical textbook, The Developing Human, Clinically Oriented Embryology, states that fertilization creates a new combination of chromosomes that is different from that in the cells of either of the parents. And this is the beginning of a new human being. The clinical book, An Atlas of the Human Embryo and Fetus, a photographic review of human prenatal development states, a human being originates from two living cells, the oocyte, female germ cell, and the spermatozoan, male germ cell, transmitting the torch of life to the next generation. So although this is controversial from a political perspective, the scientific facts of embryology, genetics, and molecular biology leave no doubt as to when each human life begins. For everyone, life begins at fertilization. I'm Amanda Reed Sheik, here with Just Facts. For thorough documentation of every fact in this video and more facts about this issue, read the article, The Facts of Science Prove That Each Human Life Begins at Fertilization at JustFactsDaily.com.